let's have a look at the fourth set there are only three female students a k and r so we have the list of the female students a k and r and only three male students are there b m and s so we have three male students b m and s now the course has two evaluation components, a project and a test. So each of these students must be evaluated on project as well as on the test. The aggregate scores in the course is the weighted average of the two components. It is the weighted average of what? Of project as well as the test, such that the weights being positive and adding up to one. So that is also given to you. Projects are done in a group of two. Now remember, projects are done in a group of two. They are not talking about tests. With each group consisting of a female, this is also a condition given to you, with each group consisting of a female and a male student. Both the group members obtain the same score. So as a group, if let's say A and S are working together, on project they are going to get the same score. Same way if K and M are working together, then on project they are going to get the same score. Both the group, both the group members obtain the same score in the project. The following additional facts are known about the scores in the project and the test. So I'm presuming that they are going to get project scores they are going to get test scores and then they are going to look at the total scores of the students as well because the weighted average is what they are talking about, right? So if we can get down to the scores of all of these six individuals in terms of project test and their weights attached to project and test scores, then we should be able to get down to the total scores as well. This is what the understanding is. So our intent will be to try and fill this entire uh, table over here. Now let's go on to the first statement, the minimum and the maximum and the average of both project and test scores were identical 40, 80 and 60 minimum, maximum and average is given to you for both project as well as the test scores. Everything is given to you over there. Now we already know that on project two of the students are going to get the same scores. So if I look at just the project scores of the six students, then what is going to happen? You will have a minimum 40. That means one student will get a 40 on project. Now, my problem is that on project, two of these students will get the same scores. That means if one is getting 40, then the other has to naturally get a 40. Fair enough. The maximum score is what? 80. So one of the student on project has to get an 80. Then the other student on a project also has to get an 80 because they both must be working as a pair. So if one is getting an 80, then the other one is also getting an 80. Now, if you look at 40, 40, 80, 80, you will realize that the average of these four numbers in itself is still 60. And the total average is also 60 in project as well, right? That means there are two more students over here who are working as a pair on the project and they must be getting a score in such a way that the average of all six should turn out to be 60. Now that is not the only important thing, one more important thing that we need to understand is both of these individuals must get the same score as well, such that their average is 60. The only option left is this must be 60 and this must be 60. If any one of you has got a confusion in terms of saying that, sir, what if one of them gets a 59 and another one gets a 61? That's fair. The average will become 60. But the problem is both of them have to score equal because they are working in a project and hence 60 is the only choice left with us. So we know what are the scores on project in terms of what these individuals will be getting. Now, who is getting what score? We are yet to figure that out. As far as test is concerned, we cannot really say anything like this as far as test is concerned. So we'll have to go ahead and look at the second statement. The test scores of the students were all in a multiple of 10. Now, remember, test scores minimum was 40. Maximum was 80, average was 60, and they are all in a multiple of 10. Four of them were distinct, getting distinct score, and the remaining two were getting equal to the average test scores. Average test score is what 60. So there are two of the individuals who are getting a 60 each. Now, a minimum of 40 has to be there, and a maximum of 80 has to be there. Now, the other two are left with only one choice, which is 50 and 70. So these will be the test scores that we are looking at 40, 50, 60, 60, 70, 80. These are the test scores that we are looking at, right? Now let's go on, look at the third statement. Amala score in project. That means we are looking at the project score of Amala was double that of Poli. Now one number has to be double that of the other. The only option left with us is 40 and 80. So Amala's score in the project is double that of Poli's score in project. So Kohli must be scoring a 40 and 
Amala must be scoring a 80. So 40 into 20 will then become 80 because otherwise there is no other pair possible wherein one is getting the double of the other. The moment I write this, I realize that A, K, R are the female students and B, M, S are the male students. A must be pairing up with one of the male students. K must be pairing up with one of the male students, right? Then R has to pair up with another male student and that pair must get the same score, which is different from 80 and 40. That means R must be getting a 60 for sure. So we have gotten down to the value of A, K and R in terms of the project, right? So that was the statement that was given to us over here. Amala's score in project was double that of Kohli. With the help of that, I'm able to figure out a few things. But Kohli scored 20 more than Amala in test. Now Kohli is scoring 20 more than Amala in test. 20 more than Amala in test. This is also something that they've given us. So A plus 20 would then become equals to the score of Kohli on test component. Yet Amala has the highest aggregate score. Highest aggregate score is given to me, but I don't know what is the total score because that is not the sum of these two, but the weighted average. And as of now, nothing has been spoken about the weights of project and test. So we can't really comment and get down to this particular value of H1. So Amala had the highest aggregate score. That is why I've kept it as H1. The second highest will be H2, H3, H4, so on and so forth. The last one will be H6. Now Shamla, Shamla scored the second highest in test. So now we are getting into this testing zone and we are able to understand that Shamla has scored the second highest in test. What is the second highest in test? 70. Who is taking that 70 as a score? Shamla is taking that score. He scored two more than Kohli, but two less than Amala in the aggregate. So Shamla is scoring two more than Kohli, two more than Kohli in test in aggregate, but two less than Amala in aggregate. I don't know whether between Amala and uh, Shamla is there Sham is there anybody else or not? Okay, so he scored two more than Kohli, but two less than Amala in the aggregate. So this is the aggregate that I am looking at in terms of their respective positions with respect to each other. Right now, let's go on look at the fifth one. Biman scored the second lowest in the test. What is the second lowest in the test? Fifty. Biman is scoring that. So Biman is taking a 50, which is over here. So Biman scored second lowest in the test and the lowest in aggregate. So this will be the sixth or the last person. That is why I'm naming it as giving it as H6 position. Okay. Now let's look at the last statement. Matthew scored more than Rini in project. If Matthew has to score more than Rini in the project, 80, 40, 60 is there. Matthew has to score more than Rini. Rini is already scoring 60. We know the scores can be only 40, 80 and 60. So that means Matthew must be scoring an 80 on the project front. So this blank is also filled with us, but less than her in the test. Matthew is scoring less than Rini in the testing front. So this detail is also given to us, right? So we have almost gotten down to everything on project, but test is where we are still struggling a little bit. Now let's try to evaluate this testing a little bit more and try to understand what all informations do we have. We realize that if you look at A and M, they're getting the same score on project, which is 80, 80, but overall A is the highest of, among all of them. That means the score that M is getting over here must be less than the score of A. That means of A. Now let's try to look at this particular aspect and try to understand what is really happening over here. Now, what can be the score of A? The score of A can be a 40. In that case, K will then become 60 or A can be 60. In that case, K will become 80. Now, the problem over here is that you can't give the value of A as 80 because then in that case, K will become 100. That's not possible. So only possibility for A is either 40 or 60. In that case, K will get 60 or 80. Now, we need to understand that A has to score in such a way that it is more than M score. It is more than score of M. If A gets 40, then M will naturally get more than 40, which is not allowed. So if A gets 40, then that condition will get, will violate the 
table over here and this condition will get violated. So A40 is rejected, then K60 is also rejected. Then the only option left with A is 60 on test. So if A is getting 60 on test, then one of the 60 is gone. Then K is scoring an 80. That is also gone with us. Now what are we left with? We are left with two scores and those two are the scores of M and R, right? And M is scoring less than R. So M must be scoring a 40 and M must be scoring a 40 and R in that case must be scoring a 60. So this is the score of R as well. So we have the score of everybody as far as the testing is concerned. We are now left with project and let's see if we can make some more sense out of this data in order to figure out between B and S what are the values. Now what are the values left for us? Two of the 80 values have been occupied. One of the 40 value has been occupied and one of the 60 value has been occupied. So we are left with 40, 60. So B and S can have a 40, 60 like this or it can have 60, 40 like this. Now, if you look at the comparison of K, S and A over here, you will realize K has to score lesser than S. Now look at K and S in comparison over here. K is over here and S is over here. Now K is already getting a greater score over here, which is in comparison to 70 of test for S, he's getting an 80. That means he's already getting more, but overall K is getting less. That means this value present over here for S project value must definitely be greater than 40 because if it becomes 40, then K score will be more than S score, which is not allowed, right? So S getting a 40 on project is rejected. So B getting a 60 on project is also rejected. We are left with only one option that B must get a 40 over here and S must get a 60 over here. So that's the set of data that we have been able to get down to. All project values have been figured out. All test values have been figured out. We are yet to figure out the weight, but let's go on to the questions and see when is the weight required. The moment weight is required, we will be able to calculate that because we have a information available with us, which we have not used. And what is that information? We have not used the difference of two between K, S and A's aggregate score. But let's have a look at the questions and then try to understand what best can be done for that. Now, if you look at what is Rini's score in project, you can answer this question with the help of just this data itself. What is Rini's score on project? Rini's score on project is 60. So that answer becomes 60 for you. Let's move on to the next one. What is the weight of the test component? Now, let us try to figure out the weight of the test component and project component. So let's say I take the project component weight as Project component, just give me a second. Project component weight as X and test component as Y. Then we already know that X plus Y must be equals to one. Clear? Yeah. Now what do we know? We know that the project score of K is 40, test score is 80. So what will be the score of K that we are looking at? We are looking at the score of K as 40 into X weight right? And 80 into Y, that is also the weight of test component. Divide that by X plus Y. If I divide that by X plus Y, then that's going to make it equals to one. So denominator one, you don't really have to write it. We are making the equation look a lot easier with the help of that, right? S score will be what? S score is 16 to X plus 17 to Y. S is scoring more than K. So take the K score and add two to this. That should get me the score of S. What is score of S? Score of S is 60X plus of 70Y. Right? Now let's try to solve this equation and we should be able to get down to the values of X and Y because we have two equations, two linear equations. We should be able to do that. Let's move on. Let's try to work through this. You are going to get a 10Y plus of two. That should be equals to 20X. That should be equals to 20X. Now let's Substitute the value y is 1 minus x. So I'm going to substitute the value over here 10 into 1 minus of x plus of 2 to be equals to 20x. Now let's just try to solve this. 10 plus 2 will then make it 12 minus 10x, which goes on the other side becomes 30x. So what is the value of x? 12 by 30, which is going to be 2 by 5, which is going to be equals to 0.4. 
So if X is 0.4, that means project score weight is 0.4, then the test score weight is 0.6. So the sum should be turning out to be equals to one. So now the question is talking about what is the weight of the test component? The weight of the test component is 0.6. That's the answer for this question. What is the maximum aggregate score obtained by the student? Maximum of aggregate score definitely is by A. So we will just try to calculate the value of A and finish it off. What do we get? We will get 80 into the project weight, which is 0.4 plus 60 into the test weight, which is 0.6. We'll try to calculate this. 8 fours are 32. So you'll get a 32 over here. 6 is a 36. So you get a 36 total becomes a 68. So what is the maximum aggregate score obtained by the student? 68, right? Let's move on. Look at the next question. What is Matthew's score in the test? Matthew's score in the test is going to be 40. Matthew's score on the test is going to be 40, right? Let's look at the last question of this particular set. Which of the following pair of students were a part of the same project team. Now look at the project teams which were there. 80 and 80 was a project team. So AM was a project team. Then 40 and 40, which is KB will be a project team. And then the next project team will be R and S. These are the three project teams. We definitely know the answer. There's no other case possible. So which of the following pair of students were a part of the same project team? A and B were a part of the same project team? No. K and W, K and M were the part of the same project team? No. So neither one nor two will then become the answer of this question. So with that, we have been able to conclude the set. There were three questions based on this uh, table itself. And there were two questions which were based on trying to calculate the weights of the project and test. So even if you are able to calculate the marks over here and not able to calculate the weight, that's still fine. You can still do three questions out of five from this particular set.